Hi designers, in this video we'll be exploring how the shape tool really works as well as how to combine shapes to make your own holiday themed custom shape. Before we get into how the shape tool works, we need to understand how Photoshop creates images. We need to understand pixels, rasters, and vectors. Photoshop is known as a raster based graphics program, which means it uses rasters to create images. Raster is another word for pixel. Basically, both terms re refer to the small squares of color that Photoshop uses in order to create an image. This is the primary way that Photoshop creates images. But you'll notice something about this method. When you zoom way in, you'll notice that Photoshop can't actually draw a curve. The only way it can approximate a curve, or a diagonal for that matter, is by filling in rasters or pixels with less and less color. So in order to create the curve of the snowman that goes from white to blue, it has to fill in pixels with less and less blue. That way when we zoom out, it blends together in our eyes and it looks smooth. The problem with this method is that it's not scalable. We have to create images at the size we intend to use them. So I created this image at 8 by 8 inches. I can't really make it any bigger or you'll start to see these pixels and it will look very jaggedy. There is another way to create images and that's called vector based graphics. Now Illustrator that we haven't used yet is a vector based graphics program and everything you create in Illustrator is scalable. That means it could be used on something as small as a business card or something as big as a billboard and it would remain smooth and clean. Now even though Photoshop isn't a vector based program, it does recognize vectors and it uses vectors to create shapes because shapes are scalable. You may have noticed a small gray line around your shape when you were drawing it. If I zoom all the way in here, you can see the path. That's what this small gray line is called. And it's a vector that tells Photoshop where to place the pixels. In this case, it's telling Photoshop to fill in all the pixels on this side with white and to leave all of the pixels on this side with blue. And then, of course, it also has a formula for creating uh, the various colors, that transition between the two colors. I can actually use the shape tool to create a tiny snowman and here you can see the path very clearly but yet because Photoshop is a raster based program and this is very very small it can only approximate the snowman and so I don't get a fully scalable snowman. However if I zoom all the way out I can also create a snowman that's very large. So in this way, the path or the vector is scalable, even though the actual image is still raster based. It's kind of a neat way that Photoshop works using both vectors and rasters. Now the shape tool actually has three different functions. The one that we will use the most often is shape layers. If you look up here on the options bar, shape layers is the first option. You also have the option to draw just a path, which is just that line, but yet you haven't told Photoshop what to do with it yet. Again, this path will not print out. It's just waiting for you to tell it whether you want to fill it with pixels or stroke it with a line or use it for um, selection or whatnot. Photoshop also has, or the shape tool also has another option called fill pixels. And this will work when you're using a blank layer. You can fill in uh, the pixels, but you see as soon as I let go, the path disappears. While this is all right, um, it's not very edible and it's not very scalable. Even if I change the color, you'll see how jagged um, the line gets because Photoshop just goes ahead and fills up that whole color and it doesn't pay attention to that transition. So I wouldn't really recommend using fill pixels that often. However, both shape layers and drawing paths, the first two options, can be useful. In order to create your own custom shape, you'll need to understand the different functions that the shape tool can use. Those are located right up here on the options bar, um, and you'll notice there are five different uh, 
functions. The first one is just create a new shape layer. That's the, the default for the shape tool. The next is adding to the shape area. The third one is subtracting from the shape area, intersecting shape areas, and then excluding overlapping shape areas. Today you'll mostly be using the first uh, three, the shape layers, the adding, and the subtracting. I'm going to show you how to make both the snowman and the jack-o'-lantern. If you'd like to create something else that's holiday themed, like a Christmas tree, um, you can do so, but you're going to need to uh, kind of creative problem solve yourself and figure out how to do that, and you can earn extra credit by doing that as well. So let's start off with the snowman. Choose your ellipse tool and make sure it's set on shape layers, not on paths, and that you are creating a new shape layer. Click and drag uh, out of shape. You can hold shift if you would like this to be a perfect circle. If you would like to move it around, you can hold the space bar to move it around. Then you're going to add to this vector mask, you're going to add another path. So you're going to use the second function, which is add to the shape area. And again, I can hold shift to make that a perfect circle, and I can hold my space bar to move it around. And then I'm going to add a third one for the head. Now, if you've drawn these and you would like to move them around or edit them, you can do so by using the path selection tool, which is right above the shape tool, this black arrow. It'll select the path and it'll let you move it around, up or down. You can actually transform it and resize the shape if you would like. And then you can also rotate, although this is a circle, so rotating it won't do much. Once you have your three shapes together, you can use the path selection tool to select all three paths and combine them. And that will get rid of the extra parts of the path and create one solid shape. Next will be to add the eyes. So you can use the ellipse tool, or you could use any of the custom shapes, but I'm going to keep it simple. And we want the eyes to be holes where the background shows through, so we're going to use the third option, which is subtract from the shape area, and create those eyes. Now I'd like the eyes to be the same, so I'm going to use the path selection tool, and just like you can use the move tool to duplicate images, you can use the path selection tool to duplicate paths by holding option, and then dragging out an identical path. I actually did the same thing for uh, the coal on the mouth. I created a small circle and then I used the path selection tool holding option to drag out identical little circles. Makes it a lot easier than trying to match it with the ellipse tool. For the carrot nose, you have a couple of options. You do have a polygonal tool which you could set to three sides to make a triangle or you can try out the pen tool because this is such a simple shape it's very easy to draw your own path using the pen tool. Uh, the pen tool draws using anchor points so you just click and release three times and then close the path and then that will create a triangle for you. Now this whole time I've been working with subtract from shape area. Um, if for some reason you got off of that it would appear like this. You'd have the path, but it would be filled in. And so you can just use your path selection tool, select that, and then choose subtract. I use the line tool for the arms. The line tool is a little bit different in that you have to set the weight of the pixels first. So I believe this was 15 pixels. Now that was still set on subtract, so I can go over to my path selection tool, click on it, and change it to add. Um, again, paths are editable. You can change them. You can change their function. You can actually change the anchor points and alter them in that way as well. So let's make sure we're on add this time. And you can make your snowman waving or high-fiving or give him three fingers, four fingers, whatever uh, you would like. You can also add a top hat. I used a an oval or an ellipse, a rectangle, and another oval to give it that three-dimensional look even though it is a two-dimensional shape. Um, I used a custom shape tool for the buttons. You'll find that there are many different options um, that you could add to, to your snowman. Go ahead and be creative with that. When you're done with your snowman, 
you're going to use the path selection tool to select all the paths that make up the snowman and use the combine button to create it into one shape. Then the really neat part is that you can save this as a custom shape to use later. Go up to edit, define custom shape, and name it snowman or frosty or whatever you want to name it. And then you'll be able to find it in your custom shapes menu right down here. You can see I've already saved a few others that I've created. All right, so that's the snowman. That's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and try out the jack-o'-lantern as well. It's a little more complicated because I edited the paths after I combined them. I used uh, the ellipse tool to draw several overlapping ellipses, which make up the bumps of the pumpkin. And you can give them as many bumps as you would like. Make sure you overlap them and create something that resembles a pumpkin. It's going to look a little bit maybe too bumpy at first uh, because these are perfect ovals. That looks all right. All right, and you'll notice a lot of people have this problem. I created all different shape layers. You want to make sure you're creating paths on the same shape layer. So if this happens to you, go ahead and delete all the extra shape layers. And make sure, again, you're using Add to Shape Area when you create those ovals or whatever path that you're adding. All right, let's try it with that. That's kind of rough, but I can edit it later. You want to take your time. I'm trying to uh, be quick for you for the video. Go ahead and combine those ovals together. And then you'll notice you have these anchor points and you can actually move those anchor points using the direct selection tool. Click off of the path and that way you can just select one anchor point at a time and you can move these around to make the pumpkin look a little bit more natural to even out the curves and the bumps a little bit more. You'll notice that some of these anchor points have handles on them. If you'd like to make the curve more or less uh, bumpy you can use the handles to do that. I'll zoom in and show you a little bit closer here on this next one. So here's the handle and I can make it more bumpy or I can add the bump. Smooth it out. And again, this irregularity makes your pumpkin look a little bit more natural. All right, now you're ready to add a stem, which I use a rectangle, making sure I'm adding it to the vector mask over here. And I used a ellipse for the top to make the, the stem look round. I edited those, you can see, so that they curve in a bit. I'll let you uh, do that since I just showed you how. And then I selected all the paths and combined them. Now for the eyes and the mouth, I actually used the pen tool to draw these curvy shapes. Again, I'm going to uh, put the pen tool on the subtract function. I need to unselect the path so it doesn't subtract my whole path. And then I'm going to draw a path. Um, my first anchor point is just click and release. My second one to draw a curve is click and drag out the handle. Click and release. Click and drag out the handle. Click and release and close it up. All right, same thing again over here. Click and release, click and drag, click and release, click and drag, click and release. Click and release creates a corner while click and drag creates a curve, so that's the difference there. And then you can add little pupils by going back up here and changing the function to add the shape area. There we go, and I did the same thing with the mouth by creating this curved shape, very simple shape, setting it to subtract from shape area. And then I used a rounded rectangle to create the teeth. The more uneven, the more goofy, or sometimes the more sinister your pumpkin will look. Just like with the snowman, when you're done, you can select all the paths and combine them and come up to edit, define custom shape, and name it pumpkin or jack-o'-lantern, 
or give it a name and it will be saved in your custom shapes menu as well. All right, so that's how you combine shapes and use the shape tool to create your own custom shapes. This is going to be really useful when we get into logo design because you can create and alter your own logos and then save them um, and they are editable and scalable. All right, I hope you have fun with this project.